Good evening and welcome to Musgrave Park Cork for the Osterbank League Division 1A match between Dolphin and their great Cork rivals Cork Constitution which we are streaming live on irishrugby.ie My name is Gordon Black and with me tonight is former Dolphin second row forward and well-known journalist Hugh Farrelly Hugh, you must have played in a few of these Cork derbies in the past Is there something special about these matches compared to ordinary all Ireland League matches? There is indeed, Gordon um, There are battles for Cork supremacy in, in club rugby um, and I, I do remember playing these matches. I played in the first one in Division 1 in 97 after uh, Declan Kidney got up and promoted to Division 1. And I think there was 4,000 people here in Musgrave Park that night. Marquees, bands, the whole lot. And we lost to a penalty try. And unfortunately, that has been the theme from a Dolphin point of view over the years that Conor Balls held sway. And over the last few years, that's been the case as well. Yeah, certainly at the, at the pre-match uh, dinner, Ian O'Leary, the Cork Con president, was almost apologising for the steal that Con had in Dolph, uh, in Con uh, two years ago when you led 25-5 yeah. and they came back and won at 29-28 It was a remarkable game it was a great occasion now in Temple Hill that night but uh, Con, Con have traditionally been Cork's premier club most internationals most influencing when you think of the trophies they've won compared to Dolphins last cup win in the 50s you know so it's a big battle for uh, every club in Cork to try and take knock Con off their perch and the good thing is that Dolphins are getting closer and closer and certainly looking at tonight's teams, Hugh, they, uh, I had a look through the academy and development players in, for Munster and there's seven on the Dolphin side and only two on the Con side. Surely that's, that's a changed uh, scenario from the past. Well, it, it's, it's been a feature in recent years, Gordon, that um, players have come through Dolphin uh, into the Munster uh, and Ireland set up at the likes, and we have the likes of James Cronin, James Cornyn at the moment who are making those kind of noises. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, up-and-coming talent coming through Dolphin and it's a reflection of the fact that they're challenging now so you get more people in underage out of school so so it's uh, it's, it's narrowing the gap Yeah and I was at a meeting a couple of months ago with Steve Ford and some of the uh, Dolphin mentors and he was saying that the, 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 the kind of coaching they are doing is is, is just meant is following what the, the, the what Munster do and he's very proud of the fact that a number of guys especially like someone like Keen Bahan who's playing tonight has really come through and, and he attributes a lot of that to the work that Dolphin will be doing with these players. Yeah, Keane's a very talented player. He can play kind of across the three-quarter line and as you say, like the, the philosophy is coming down from the Munster level and it does definitely impact upon the players and someone like Steve Ford will, will be well imbued in those uh, qualities and can pass them on. And now Nigel Carell from Dublin blows his whistle to start the game. Johnny Holland drops off for Cork Con and Dolphin made a awful aim to that kick-off. Uh, and Khan now on the Dolphin 22 driving forward and a lovely night for rugby here in Dublin and they're really looking at us Niall Kennedy bursting his way forward he was a doubt before the match but he looked strong there going forward uh, Dara Lyons taking into contact Khan realigning good quick ball but Dolphin's defence is well set up and it's, they have to look and see if they can prize an opening here slow ball coming back to Ryan Foley, the scrum half. Khan now going through fourth or fifth phase. Good miss ball. It's a very disappointing start from a Dolphin point of view in terms of Khan are always defined by their clinical efficiency and the kick off there and Dolphin missed the kick off and straight away Khan are on the offensive. So it's those type of small bread and butter things that Dolphin will have to pick up with if they want any chance to win this game So Cork Con were penalised over Nigel Carell for holding on to the ball up in contact and that gave Dolphin a relieving penalty, they didn't make a lot of ground out of that there but now they will have a line out just outside their own 22 with um, Niles Connell to throw in he was captain of the club last year and captain of the Irish under 20s the year before in the Junior World Cup that's a good take and good ball and the uh, it's a box kick early on, but it's too close to the touchline. There's now going to be a line out back just outside the Dolphin 22 to Cork Con. Another mistake by Dolphin Hugh. Yeah, it's, it's a bit disappointing, as I said on the basics. Um, actually, the line out battle will be interesting tonight because uh, both sides have good line outs. I, I was at the UCD Dolphin game last week, and the, the one positive was the Dolphin line out. Uh, Con have a uh, very tall pack at the moment, the likes of Connor Farley, Shane O'Connor. So, it could be a very interesting battle there. Anyone that gets a, bit, a few turnovers there could, could be significant. Yeah, they got Shane O'Connor back from France last year where he'd been 
a professional for three or four years. He's put on some muscle by the looks of it, you know. I mean, he, he, he was uh, he was in the Munster scene there a few years ago. Uh, looks very powerful out there, which is which will obviously impact on the scrum as well as line out. That's a, that looks like a very good defensive line out by Dolphin. They nullified Cork Con, drove them back. And another penalty, same offence. Cork Con have got to be more clinical with ball in possession. They're going in in ones and they need to support there instantly because Dolphin looked very, very well drilled uh, in getting the jackal position over the ball. It's an area where Con kind of, have. Um used to their advantage in the, last few, in the last few meetings is the breakdown Dauphin have been beaten at that area before so I know it's, it's been a big focus this season to try and combat the con, previous con supremacy in that area So now Dauphin have worked their way back almost up to the halfway line remedying the disaster start, that's a poor throw by Niles Connell. it was crooked to the con side and con have driven forward good attacking platform to Johnny Holland out to Keneally I'm not quite sure that con man was expecting that pass. A good try for a good quick ball. That's what the modern game's all about. Uh, poor presentation, but it wasn't knocked on by Corcon. Nigel Cabell correctly calls. It is a came off the foot of the player. Con drive forward down the blind side, but again a messy ball. That's two successive balls from Corcon. Darrell Lyons, a poor kick. It's a nice move by um, Darren, Darren Sweetman, I believe, uh, the former core curler who joined from UCC uh, to Dolphin this ah, year. He, I think he threw a side. He's playing on the left wing despite the fact he's wearing 14. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> So a problem, Hugh, for Cork Khan, that's two penalties at ruck time and then two rucks where the, the ball was poorly presented. One, they were lucky it came off a foot and, and came back in. And the second time, it came out the side and Dolphin rightly hacked it down the field. I'd, I, it must be very frus frustrating for the coach, Tom O'Cahy, because they've dominated the opening exchanges and they've nothing really to show for it. And it's down to their own uh, lack of efficiency uh, at, at crucial times. And a fine take at the back of the line out there for Dolphin. John Quill, the USA International, took that ball and they're really driving forward now. Good knock down by Khan. Direct in front of the post. Roy Scannell, but no, he's just left and wide. With a left foot drop goal, he'll be disappointed with that. He's had a very good start to the season and that was an ideal opportunity to put Dolphin three points up. He's a very talented um, footballer, Scannell, but he, he's he's filling the, the shoes of a, you could say, a Dolphin legend in in, um, in Barry Keishan, who's a second highest point scorer in the league. So I think uh, Scannell will have to take those chances. And of course, the brother of the of the Dolphin hooker, Niall Scannell. The Dolphin being well served by the Scannell brothers here this evening. Now they've clean possession, but slow ball. They, they, they drive down the blind side. Can defend well. The play's got a little bit static over the far side of the field. Dolphin not driving forward, but a penalty to Dolphin. And a little bit of reaction from players. Nigel Corella straight in. And he's penalised Corkon for coming in the side, down the blind side. Uh, it looks like possibly Shane O'Connor was the offender on that occasion. It's yeah, big, it was big Shane O'Connor. decision here now for Dolphin Gordon. Do they go? Do they go down the touchline or do they have a pop and try and get early points on the board? Well, if you have confidence in your kicker, I know Barry Keeson is not playing tonight, uh, but if you have confidence in your kicker, it's certainly very kickable. It will be 40 meters out, and about uh, six, seven meters in from the far touchline. And what is a, a beautiful evening here for rugby in Cork? This pitch here in Musgrave Park is an absolute credit to the Munster branch. Uh, some people would say it's a credit because they don't get enough rugby played on it, but it, it looks in 
pristine condition and a big crowd is building up here this evening uh, for what would be a, an eagerly awaited Cork Derby. Here. That was a poor effort. Poor effort indeed by Rory Scandal. This is what we were talking about. This is where you miss the, uh, the place kicking skills of the likes of Barry Keishan. He just never got, got on top of that at all. But as you were saying about the crowd, it's, it's great to see crowds like this coming out for club games. We all remember the games in the 90s where you get three or 4,000 regularly. And of course, uh, pro professional provincial rugby took over. But it's great to see... Uh, two or three thousand people here tonight, or, or close on close on two thousand people here tonight. Yeah, Richie Whelan was telling me before the game that last year on Good Friday, when the two clubs met here, there were three thousand two hundred at the match. I think the fact they couldn't get a point anywhere else in town had a say in that. But, I uh, thought I thought you might come up with that one, all right. <laughs> no, it was a great occasion last that last year. Another another close, uh, tense, exciting game. And and to be honest, Gordon, these teams look very evenly matched again. I I can't see there being much being much in it at the end. So attacking scrum to Dolphin. 30 metres out from the con line. Good ball. Out to Rory Scandal. And I looked around. But, oh, just slipped. It went backwards. Nigel Carell again. Good decision. The ball did go backwards. Despite a few plaintive Cork Con cries. And now the first penalty to Cork Con. For Dolphin going off their feet at the ruck. On the 10 metre line. Just the Dolphin back line. Didn't move the ball with real authority there and that would be frustrating for both sets of coaches very good defence from Khan there Gordon they, they pushed up uh, very quickly and got, and got in Dolphin faces and now they have a line out and it's interesting that this year the Khan line out has been overseen by Mick O'Driscoll who we all know from this time with the uh, Munster in Ireland and, and you know he might have been the biggest secular in the world but he was a gifted line out operator so you'd imagine this would be a fairly slick operation Yes, I read an interview during the week, Hugh, uh, where they were talking about Mick O'Driscoll and his coaching. He said, what a, a very, very organised and clinical person he is. And a lovely loop from Canidi to, there to Holland. And unfortunately, Darrell Lyons slips on what is a, obviously a, a, a slightly wet surface. Good ball from Foley and they're driving it forward, Con, with Jerry Sweeney. And... Dolphin are penalised for not releasing the player on the ground and they're, they're obviously querying the decision and Nigel Carell has is, is, is just told Christy Condon, the captain of Dolphin that when a guy is brought to ground he must be released immediately you can't hold on and try and delay and this now gives Johnny Holland a very kickable penalty just outside the 22 and just to the left of the post as we look at it you'd expect Holland to get this he's a, he's a player that Munster are very interested in and he's been tracked and he's got a good all round game and, and kicking is certainly part of it there's a lot of penalties so far Gordon and it's, it's kind of indicative of the derby tension you know teams are kind of going for things that they might normally hold, they would normally hold back on and I would imagine that both sets of coaches who would be disappointed in the penalties being given away yeah, there's no real need ok when, you, when you're penalising an attack we're holding on that can happen all right but the defensive one they got there now you know steve ford will be very upset now holland to kick strikes it well straight yeah. down the middle of the post and cork can take a three points to nil lead after 11 and a half minutes it, it is the penalty issue it, it, like it's hard it's hard to describe in cork now the, the both sets of players have been uh, building up for this all week um, you know, Cork is a big city but a small town in many sense and it's very hard to escape it there's a lot of crossovers between players and stuff so a lot of tension built up and it, it's come across in the first 10-12 minutes Yeah it was interesting listening to the two presidents beforehand when they're making their speeches and the number of guys who have played for both clubs is actually to a, uh, a Dublin person is, is astounding Now Holland long kick down and he couldn't go to direct touch because the ball was passed inside good take by John Fitzgerald and now, oh, a mistake. 
Uh, was he ahead? Yes. Good decision by the referee. A very good decision by the referee from where I'm standing. The uh, Cork Con winger, Cahill Quinn, former Ballon Hinch player, who's very quick, was in front of the player there. And Dolphin very lucky for that mistake to get away with that. That could very easily have been a, a five pointer. Definitely. I mean, um, it looked like he was clean through on the try line. So, I mean, Dolphin have been riding their luck in the, in the opening exchanges. So, they just need to maybe set it down now, maybe take this ball down and, and, and keep it up the jumper for a bit and um, play a more pragmatic style because it's been a bit frenetic so far. But you were saying about the crossovers there, Gordon. Like it's, it's, it's very interesting. It goes back to Jim Kiernan leaving Khan to join Dolphin in the 50s, which caused a lot of hassle at the time. And there's always been this back and forth between the clubs. So it creates an extra special sense of uh, tension and, and drive. Did you yourself, you ever swap across the city? I, I, was, a, I was approached by Khan in the, in the early 90s, but, uh, and they promised me a first-team place. But the fact they had Gabriel Fulcher and another Munster player at the time I didn't quite believe them, so uh, I decided to take my lesser talents elsewhere. And yet another penalty for going over the top, and Khan had done very well to turn that ball over, and they stayed in the feet early on, but then the next guy in, possibly a little bit unlucky there, uh, that was Cahill O'Flaherty. He did seem to drive the Dolphin player away from the man on the ground, but he was penalised by Nigel Carell for going off his feet. Uh, maybe a little bit of sympathy there for him in that case. But this, gi this now gives Rory Scandal a second chance to go for goal. He's already missed a penalty and a drop goal. So, third time lucky. Well, Flaherty's a very talented player, by the way. He's, uh, he, can, he can cover the back five. He's part of that uh, very good uh, Prez team that won the Cup a few years ago, 2010. You talk about Prez and Christians, Hugh. Is, would one favour going to Khan and the other favour going to, to Dolphin or how does it work? Well traditionally it was always um, uh, There we are, great kick by Rory Scannell to bring it back to three points each he stuck that one much better than either of his previous attempts Traditionally it was always Prez tended to gravitate towards uh, Cork Khan going back to the days of Tom Kiernan um, but uh, and, and Christians would have gone to Dolphin but that seems to be in reverse now and I know the Dolphin squad at the moment is a lot of Prez players so um, there's obviously a deep rivalry between the two schools. Um, that have anything to do with the fact that I understand Steve Ford does a bit of coaching in Prez? <laughs> he, does, he does a bit of coaching in Prez, which, which can't harm. Mm. He, he, that's a knock on there by Khan. Yeah, referee playing advantage, yes, but Dolphin have it. Oh, no shot, you kick it. That's a good kick. Well judged. Khan just have time to release it. Now they've got to get it back. Now, if Khan moves this, there's numbers here. Oh, why did he go back inside? It was a clear overlap. Five to two going left. A uh, big drive there by Cahill O'Flaherty. Foley again, out to Brian Cagney. And Khan making good progress here, but they look like... Knock on there from a great tackle by uh, Condon, I think it was Gordon. It was indeed Chrissy Con. Christie's uh, Chrissy Con is one of these um, great old gnarly AIL warriors. He's been playing tighter there for, for many years. He was on Munster's books for a while, and he's the type of guy that brings on the likes of James Cronin and the younger guys. Um, and he, he's former captain of the club, and just it's great to see him still going strong. Talking of James Cronin, Hugh, where is he playing now? James Cronin, uh, the loose head, he, mm. he, well, he's involved in Munster now these days, so uh, so this is the the peril of success. The, the higher your players go, guys like Dave O'Callaghan, back row, has been called up by Munster, so you, you lose access to them for the club club side, which is kind of lost a few guys like Ivan Deneen, Duncan Williams, these types of these, these types of players. Too. It's just a kind of a facet of, of uh, bringing players through. But James Cronin is, is a development player. Surely he would have, could have been made available tonight, or maybe he's... He's now so much part of the Munster I, fabric. As I understand it, um, they're, they're put on programmes to rest them up for, for matches to come, so he wasn't available. But to be fair, Khan lost a uh, quota of players as well, so there's yeah. no gripe there. As oh, no shock to see now. Finney out to Scannell. Again, Khan up very quickly in defence. 
Uh, really putting pressure on. Uh, so Cassano is now forced to kick. Daryl Lyons is back, but that's actually in the middle and it's been let hop. Oh, no. Oh. Great drive forward by Dolphin. Can they get the turnover? Yes. They have, a, they have a penalty against Cork Con for holding on again. Thumping tackle in midfield there. And the Dolphin players piled forward and won the penalty from Nigel Carell. Rory Scandal's confidence will be up after his last successful kick. This is much the same distance, but slightly now to the left of the post as we look, but almost straight in front. It's an exciting um, opportunity here tonight, Gordon, for these players, because if you think about it, I was at this game a couple of years ago and Simon Zebo was playing, you know, so, I mean, getting a bit of exposure. I mean, the standard, the standard is high, so there's young, the young guys out here who will think that this is a, a chance to showcase their talents, and that, that's good to see that the club game still remains so uh, relevant. It appears to be very relevant in Munster. Uh, guys are still coming through from the Ulster Bank League. Uh, Scandal kicks for goal, but he's pushed it to the right and wide. These, these are the misses that could come back to haunt off and now. I mean, these are these are points that need to be taken. But, but speaking about the relevance of the Ulster Bank League, um, we look at Jack McGrath making his first cap for, for Ireland tomorrow. Um, he's played numerous games for St Mary's in the, in the All Ireland in the Ulster Bank League, and you know it just shows that um, what it was seen to lose lose its uh, focus there for a while. The league is, is back producing players and it's a good production line. Now Cork kind of dropped off, but they were in front of the kicker, and referee Nigel Carell has pulled it back for a scrum on the 22 directly in front of the post. A very very good attacking opportunity now for our Dolphin. At the last Dolphin put in, uh, Khan got a, a bit of a shove up on the left hand side, Brian Cagney the number one, uh, which meant that whenever John Fitzgerald the Dolphin number eight broke, he had to go the long way round. If, if, if Christy Condon really needs to lock this down on the tight head side to give them the platform if they want to on the short side. Uh, interestingly, Dolphin have two men to the right against three Cork, def Cork Con defenders. Whereas a four to the left against two plus one defender. Dolphin scrum drives forward well, but the ball came back on the con side. But a poor kick into touch means that lineup will be on the 22. And that was a, a very, poor very messy scrum there. I mean, the, the new laws that were introduced this year are supposed to sort out this area, but that, that, that scrum is all over the, the place. And, and it's, it's telling to watch. Uh, Hooker's struggled to come to grips with the striking again, which is now, which was kind of abandoned there for years, but it's now back in vogue. So, scrummaging will have to improve. Good line out from Dolphin. They take it up the middle, but good tackling by Cork Khan. Uh, and it's an advantage to Cork Khan, a penalty advantage for going over the top, and the penalty's actually been given because the ball hasn't been won clearly. But that is probably the fifth penalty tonight for the attacking player driving forward and not releasing the ball and the defenders be able to jackal over him. Uh, it's something the coaches will be very, very frustrated about. The, the ball player just needs to have more support with him, Gordon, when he's going into contact. I mean, it's, it's a basic level and the fellas are getting isolated and as you say, the opposition are jackling over. So it's something definitely uh, coaches will be looking at that at half time. So the tide just turned a little bit here, Hugh. Dolphin, after a poor start, seemed to go into the ascendant. Their pack was taking over slightly. And a very good steal there by Dolphin in the middle of the line out. And it was Darren O'Shea who, who stole that one in the middle of the line out. As a, now they drive forward. Oh, and just. That's what I saw for a second, a Dolphin man trying to remove a comp player with the help of his uh, studs there, but didn't quite come to anything. That might have been a little bit more prevalent in your day, Hugh. <laughs> the, the, yeah, I, I played the time before the yellow cards came in, so <laughs> you expected to get a, a good going over. It's, it's funny, we've seen some of the old con players here and Dolphin players here tonight, fellas who would have 
battered the heads off each other back in the day and now they're screaming for yellow cards at the slightest hint of malevolence. Yeah, it's changed times when you see someone like Wade Dooley, the former England second row, now, now a signing commissioner. Yeah. I remember I was I was in um, Tumham Park for a Munster Hanning Cup game a couple of years ago and he was doing the question and answer with Terry Kingston. And Terry's final question was, Wait, well, Wade, if there were a signing commissioner in your day, you, how, how much time were you spent in the pit, pitch? He said, <laughs> certainly less than 50%, Terry. <laughs> now, Dolphin drive forward well. Off that line out, they've made a good 20 metres and they're still keeping it going. They're moving it right then left. And Dolphin's struggling. They're trying to manfully get in there with Ryan Murphy. Uh, decision by Nigel Carell. The ball was knocked for by Dolphin. I think he didn't allow advantage because the con player who hacked on was actually in front of the, of the con player that came off. So it's, it's, these, it's these types of errors that are killing the home side because when you're playing con you, you can't afford to give them any opportunities and Dauphin have missed two penalties they've made crucial turnovers crucial knock-ons and it's the type of uh, type of uh, indiscretions that will come back to, to haunt them at the end of the game but it was a very good box kick by Ryan Foley it was excellent, who of course yeah. is, is deputising for Jerry Hurley the Cork Con club captain I was asking Kenny Murphy before the game uh, how Jerry is progressing he got a very badly dislocated finger and torn ligaments in it but they hope to have him back within about two or three weeks and of course as a captain and a, uh, I understand he's now in a development contract with Munster he'd be a very important cog for them he's a fantastic uh, club player Jerry Hurley uh, it's a big relief in the Dolphin uh, camp that he's not playing because he's also an excellent goal kicker but it's more his uh, it's the control he brings at the base of his scrum he's, he's been around a while as I say he's, he's been involved in Munster he's a canny operator now I think both scrum halves on show tonight are our talented, uh, I see, O'Shaughnessy for Dolphin, son of uh, Bernard O'Shaughnessy, who would have been a Sunday as well stalwart from the 90s. Um, would have played with you, and I remember, I remember refereeing him many years ago. Yeah, there, there was a very good Sunday as well team back then with Ken O'Connell, Charlie Halley, Sean McCahill, these kind of guys that won the Cup in, I think it was 94. But this, this good scrum half talent on the show, but Jerry Hurley is definitely uh, a gaping void in, in, in the con team. The scrum, first clap scrum of the evening, Christy Connell appeals to touch judge. But in fact, as it was going low, he was the one who actually let the bind go and let it all collapse in. So I'm not quite sure what he was doing um, looking across the touch judge. There's a bit of symmetry here tonight, Gordon, because the Dolphin loose head is Brian Scott, whose father, Philip Scott, captained Dolphin the first time they played Colin Division 1. So I know it's been a fairly emotional week in the, uh, in the Scott house. Were you pushing behind Philip at that stage? He, he wouldn't describe it as pushing, resting, I believe. <laughs> You're very modest. I, I didn't like the scrums. My ears hurt too much. I can't, I can't get it. A bit of a sh shove on it. Certainly, oh, great one. Ah, super run by Cahill Quinn. Very good covering. He looks a very dangerous player. Now, a slight, slight bit of controversy here. The touch judge put his flag up in 22. Nigel Gravel quite correctly has said that the ball came back, having gone out in the air, came back into the field of play and actually bounced about five yards inside the con half, inside the field. That's an excellent decision by Nigel Carell, who looks a very well organised, good young referee. Early 30s, I understand. He's now refereeing British and Irish Cup matches, a member of Old Wesley. Um, it's my first time to actually see him referee live, but he's doing a very good job here. Quick throw in there uh, by Andrew Driscoll to Brian Cagney. But again, Cork Connor turned it over. It's an amazing number of turnovers here. And the mistakes continue to mount. The, ref the referee is. Um showing very good control as, as you said Gordon. But it's just a pity that there is so many stoppages you, you prefer if the game flowed a bit more um, so they just need to, as you said you need to cut out these mistakes the problem he will have Hugh is that if the mistakes continue and the penalties mount he'll have to he'll have to go, go for the cards because a penalty is given and a, although it's a, it is a disciplinary offence that you've, you've done something wrong uh, it's also an education and if the players don't listen and learn 
from those penalties, then he'll have to go to stronger sanctions. And in, in games of these tight margins, yellow cards could be disastrous. Good more from Dolphin now here as they try and work it in field. Now, middle of the field, good ball for Dolphin. Before, but Khan's defence, I must say, is excellent. Uh, they're hitting the men well. And Dolphin are getting no joy taking the ball wide. The shot is to dig it out. They drive down the, the narrow side. The shot is to scan it again. Comes across the line. Oh, great hit. I, I think Dauphin are making a fundamental error here, Gordon, that they're not using Keown Bahan enough. He, he, you know, he's the most talented and most physical player in their back line. And they, they, they um, use a dummy on him there and passed. And I think they should bring Vahan into the game more because he's the guy that can pose the most uh, threat to Khan. Yeah, he was on the bench uh, last Saturday for Munster. Obviously playing to, to a high level. But I must say I'm impressed that there's the Keneally, not, not a Keneally, the 12 for Cork Khan. I, I was down in the back pitch for the match. He is one big unit. Yeah, the, as we were saying the Khan defence, I mean, Khan's coach for the last uh, number of years is Brian Walsh, squeaky as they call him down here. And... Uh, his moving on and Tom Akai taking over was a big a big step for them but he seems to have his, his side very very well organised yeah there it is a change for Khan because Brian Walsh was with Khan for a very very long time as, as their head coach he's a fantastic servant of the club I mean he was a brilliant player possibly lucky not to get a cap he, uh, he, went, he went on tour with Ireland in 94 to Australia very uh, gifted outside centre in, in the Jerry Guscott mould just never really happened for him but a fantastic coach and a coach you'd like to have seen gone maybe into the professional ranks but as, we, as we've as we seen it's hard to make that step up from, from club rugby straight into professional uh, coaching but, arena but it's also a problem that Brian will be married with a family and professional coaching is a it's a, it's a massive gamble I mean it is you, a gamble. You, you give up your job for, mm -hmm. for a three year sabbatical and, and hope it's there when you come back Brian so works in the bank yeah he works yeah, for TSB so it's guaranteed uh, income there and uh, so to, go, to give that up that, that is a massive problem for, for, for budding uh, coaches coming through the club game Connor's is a little bit slow at the back of that scrum Dara Lyons kicking through there wasn't much else he could do there uh, just a few little things now Cork kind of a couple of rocks the balls popped out that time the ball was back at, the, at uh, number 8 Woody Ryan's feet but he, he let us sit there for a while and uh, then it popped out. They're not quite being as clinical as, as I might remember con sides of, of, of olden days. But again, the league now is a, is a young man's league queue. For very much so. I mean, I remember starting with Dolphin age 22, and I think uh, Tom Kyo was still playing then. Uh, the famous Tom Kyo, who's described as having a nose like a melted welly. But he, he must have been 36, 37 at the time, you know. And you came up against those guys back then. But as you say now, the average age must be 20, 21. Again, Kennedy up, Kennedy up the middle there, looking very strong and powerful. And Tom were worried about him before the game. He had a little bronchial problem. Taken forward by Jerry Sweeney. Foley, Johnny Holland, low scuttling kick into the corner that won't find touch Didn't, oh it has found touch that, that's the type of football Holland gives you I mean he's, he just looked up he assessed the situation and he nailed that kick and you know he comes from the club that produced Ronan Nagara and Ralph Keys before him you know so it's uh, it looks like he's, he's uh, inherited the same types of qualities it looked like Rory Scannell might have got that there but he, in the end he elected to let it go out he was looking for a quick throw in, but Khan, as has been there, won't throw out the game. We're up very quickly in defence. <laughs> it 
This is a good attacking position for Cork Khan now. Uh, just outside the 22, just coming up to half time. If they get this line up ball now, they, 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 they'll put everything in here now to get a score before half time. This is kind of a, has a game changing feel to it. Yeah, th 32 minutes gone on the clock. There's been very little injury. And the game has flowed pretty well. With just too many penalties probably for both coaches liking. But that's entirely the mistakes of the players. Nothing to do with the referee. And before you said, I'm not trying to defend the referee, Hugh. <laughs> He's having a good game. I always feel sorry for referees. I don't know who they talk to after the match. You know, everyone seems to avoid them. They're like lone figures ah, by the bar. There's always a nice girl somewhere in the, in the pavilion who talks to you. But, oh, great burst through by Corcon. Going down the blind side. So we're up now. We're 12 metres out from the, the line. Driven forward by Joe McSweeney. Is that held up? No, Roger Corral says that's a, a ruck. And Calmer going forward, so they get the put in. It's crucial here that Dauphin don't give away a penalty because it's guaranteed three points. So you just have to almost concede the scrum and then back your defence. Yes, they've seemed to get a little bit of a push on in some of the scrums, Dolphin. And it's this was slightly stronger. It's just, it's just the scrum has become so much of a lottery, and I know from a referee point of view that how difficult it is for, for it to control. But from a team's point of view, you're never quite sure it, how the penalty is going to go. So in this position, I think you make the canny decision. You let you let Khan have the ball. You let the attacking side have the ball, and then and then trust your defence. So an important scrum, 20 metres out from the Dolphin line. Score three, still three points apiece. And in fairness, neither try line has been really threatened yet. Can't get a slight nudge on, they go right through Willie Ryan. Held up, Foley waits for the ball, pops down the block, on oh, a poor pass. Almost a little bit of anxiety there from Ryan Foley playing in his first Cork Derby fresh out of school last year uh, Con rate him very highly and he's been a very adequate substitute for Jerry Hurley so far this season I think he just got a rush of blood there Gordon didn't he? I mean they, they had a nice decent scrum just work a few phases you know there was no need to go for the the frantic pass From a referee point of view, Gordon, do, do referees find um, a lesser knowledge of the laws at club level compared to a professional level? I mean, or is there, would, would these guys have a good grasp of what's required and what they need to do? Well, Hugh, it's 13 years since I last refereed, uh, coming on almost 14 years. But so from observing, do you, think, do you think there's a good knowledge there? I, I think I would be very surprised if Tom O'Cahy and Steve Ford don't ensure that their players mm. have a very good knowledge of the laws. But in the heat of battle, things can happen. Mm. Uh, another, another turnover there by Dolphin in the line out. They've won a couple now of Lanos against the head, as they say. That was a fantastic take there by Darren O'Shea, another academy player. Uh, Rory Scandal up. And this is a very messy period of play. The scandal was down well there. Through, and now a fine kick towards the left hand corner good take by John Fitzgerald but he's driven back in the tackle Khan wouldn't want to give away a penalty here no they've set it up well but again a very organised Cork Khan defence Hugh they're spread out well but John Quill the USA international tries to a bit of good footwork there to get a couple of yards and they're driving forward slowly probably hoping to draw a penalty out of Khan it's the right approach I've been mean, taking up the middle sucking as many as you can but another turnover again oh what a lovely flick out of the bat that was a, a very professional touch that time 
And I, it has to be said, Hugh, this game is turning into a, a bit of a of an error fest. fest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we think we think alike there. It's just it's just they need to just come up with a plan. I mean Dolphin put up a high ball there and Bahan challenged superbly for it. And you know, it, it provided like as I said earlier, use Bahan more, just everything still seems a bit frantic with nearly forty minutes gone. Both teams are trying to the game hasn't settled down. And I think uh, half time now could be telling because both teams need to come up with a, a pragmatic plan for the second half. Andrew Driscoll, good throw there. Foley's away. Holland, but he has to check for some reason there. But Conn have managed to slip the ball through. Foot race to the corner. Darren Sweetman, the former Cork Manor hurler, is back uh, under pressure. But he showed good pace there and uh, he was very much in control of that situation. Do you know much about Darren Sweetman at all, Hugh? I saw him um, play uh, for UCC, and I wouldn't be a hurling man now, but they say he was a, a, a gifted hurler. Um, I know they were very excited to get him out in Dauphin from, from UCC. So, as you say, he's got pace. And you find a lot of the time with, um, with crossovers from, from Gaelic games, they have an innate footballing ability that, tra that translates well to the, the centre of the wing in rugby. So it's very encouraging to see him come across. Uh, drop out. That time straight to Cahill O'Flaherty. Just get the impression Cork Connor starting to get it to put their game together now. They've had a bit of possession now, so I think uh, Steve Ford will want his team to get to half time unscathed. Oh, great tackle. That was Harry Fleming came in there and he had to because Dolph Connor a two to one and he really flew up in, in uh, defence there. Hit a classic tackle straight in the midriff of Dara Lyons to hold that attack. That's the type of, of hit that could lift a side, you know. As, like we were talking about back in the day, back in the old days you, you might start a punch to get to, or start a fight to get your team going, but not me personally, but uh, like of Terry Kingston and stuff. <laughs> but, um, no, I understand you were, you were a, a, a try-scoring second row forward, Hugh, that you actually hold the club record for the most tries in the in the All-Ireland League. Is that true? A gazelle, they used to call me. No, I, I wasn't fond of the contact, but I liked ball in hand. Um, no, but that type of hit... And would you have scored the, the, these tries out in the wing or at the back of rolling I, I, goals I, I, or what? I used to hang around the back line when it wasn't sexy or wasn't permitted, so used to much to the frustration of coaches. Second row is a very unenjoyable position, let's be honest. You know. Woody John, hey, Woody hey. John McBride thought it was a fantastic position. Yeah, but Woody John had no, no handling skills. What he had, he had big fists. For <laughs> well, your, your head squashed in between the thighs of two props. You have another fellow with his head up your, your backside. You're pushing, your toes going to rocks and get more clatters. Like if, if, if you're cursed by being fairly tall and you can't play in the centre, you know, you, you develop a bit of resentment. But with all these tries you scored, were I didn't you not? Score uh, well, here you're eight tries in 74 league games. Uh, uh, that's that is still the record for a Dolphin second row. I believe in soccer they call it goal hanging. You know, you just hang out there till the ball comes out. <laughs> and the clock is just past the 40 minute mark. Just working up towards 41 minutes. Imagine this just might be the last scrum of the first half. And Nigel Crell, a little bit of problem. The first scrum, the two front rows came up. The second scrum they got too close that time. So he's having a word with them. The scrums have gone well tonight. Not that, not that there have been that many of them. But sometimes in the modern game, scrums can be a complete disaster. I think, that, I think the new laws have been an improvement. I know they've taken the traditional hit out of it. But you just want that bit of stability and a bit of a platform because we've seen how hard it is to launch moves off scrums in recent years. I think that's gradually coming back into it, which is very encouraging. Shockless, he eventually gets in. Khan got a little bit of a drive on. That's the first time the, uh, the Dolphins come has really creaked and they've won a penalty. And the con, con front row and the front five can take real pride out of that one. You wonder, did that come back to um, Niall Scanlon having to strike the ball, do you know, and, and Con timing their push? Um, because well, it, it was it a actually, very effective scrub. It, start, it started slowly and then suddenly they accelerated mm. it. Um, Dolphin didn't hang in, so a penalty to Khan. 
40 meters is out it, to the left. It would be a bit of a sickener now for Steve Ford if they can see this because, you know, kind of dominated possession, um, but Dauphin have held in there. And just to give away a point just before half time would be a bit of a, a crippling blow. Is that you speaking as a Dolphin man now? No, I've Hugh? been objective. I've been objective here now. I was warned before the game that you were no, no, by a con person I'm, that I'm, you are a I'm, rabid I'm, dolphin follower and I was trying to equalise this up but in <laughs> fairness to you you've been Well I'd normally view it on the far side of the ground half cut so but I, I, uh, <laughs> I'm behaving myself That's Holland as it got the legs and it's just gone to the right of the post good and for, half time the game. So that's half time here in Musgrave Park just on 43 minutes and it's Dolphin 3 points Cork Con 3 points we look forward to you rejoining us in five or six minutes' time. Well done.